Hey everyone, a couple months ago, I covered the causes and diagnostics of glaucoma, an eye disease that affects hundreds of thousands of Americans every year. You can check out that video in the description below. Today, we're finally getting into treating the disease, specifically with lasers. Before getting into it, let me refresh you on what open angle glaucoma is, the form of glaucoma that we'll be talking about today. In open angle glaucoma, fluid pressure in your eye builds as a result of one of the drainage canals called the trabecular meshwork being blocked. The trabecular meshwork is located right here, on the edge of the anterior segment. When this drainage canal is blocked, your eye doesn't stop producing fluid, and thus, pressure builds, which can eventually lead to damage of your optic nerve. Sounds pretty bad, right? How do we treat that? Well today, we'll be talking about one way. Selective laser trabeculoplasty, or SLT, is a widely performed procedure in which a low energy laser is applied to the trabecular meshwork. Usually, the procedure is performed with a gonioscopy lens, a mirrored contact lens that allows a physician to visualize your angle and trabecular meshwork. Then, the laser is directed through the gonioscopy lens into your trabecular meshwork. The application of this laser usually improves trabecular outflow and can reduce intraocular pressure up to 30%. But how would a laser clear the trabecular meshwork? Well, to put it briefly, researchers have found that the application of SLT can cause biological changes. Gene expression patterns in the trabecular meshwork change after SLT. One of these changes is greater expression of cytokines, or immune signaling molecules. These cytokines recruit monocytes, or white blood cells, to increase aqueous outflow. In other words, application of a laser somehow leads to an immune response that increases fluid outflow and lowers intraocular pressure. Anyway, SLT is a great option for patients who are no longer responding to medication and can even be used as primary treatment in some cases. But there are a few drawbacks to selective laser trabeculoplasty. First of all, SLT requires training and experience on the part of the physician. Usually, you'd have to go to an ophthalmologist to get the procedure done, rather than an optometrist. This makes the procedure less accessible to patients. Secondly, the use of a gonioscopy lens in this procedure can cause complications, especially during the ongoing pandemic. Not only does it increase the risk of corneal side effects, that is, damage to the cornea, it also increases the risk of infection transmission since physical contact between the physician and the patient is required. Enter Direct Selective Laser Trabeculoplasty, or DSLT. This procedure is very similar to Selective Laser Trabeculoplasty, except no gonioscopy lens is used and the laser is applied directly to the limbus of the eye. The limbus is the circular border of the sclera and cornea, which is situated right above the trabecular meshwork. The idea is that the laser travels through the limbus to reach the trabecular meshwork. This paper from the Rothberg Glaucoma Center published in March indicates that DSLT is just as effective as SLT and presents a clinical trial in which an automated form of DSLT is used to treat 15 patients with primary open angle glaucoma. Investigators used the device produced by Belkin, an eye care startup, in order to automate DSLT. The device locates the target area, the limbus, automatically with image processing, and then fires 130 lasers simultaneously to treat the trabecular meshwork. So, great. Our clinical trial uses this novel device on its patients. How did it go? Let's talk about complications first. Two patients who had seen insufficient intraocular pressure reduction, or basically their eye pressure didn't get low enough after the initial treatment, had to be supplemented with eye drops six months after the first treatment. But these two patients both received treatments at a lower energy level than others in the study. Patients who received treatments with a higher energy level laser all experienced a significant and sustained reduction in intraocular pressure. Four patients also experienced mild subconjunctival hemorrhages, or breaks in blood vessels in the sclera that look like this. Usually, you wouldn't see these in regular SLT because the laser is being directed through the angle into the trabecular meshwork. 
In the case of DSLT, these are probably occurring because the laser is hitting scleral blood vessels on its way to the trabecular meshwork. That being said, these hemorrhages all self-resolve without treatment within a week. Those are the only real major complications presented in this paper. Now, let's talk about efficacy. In patients that were treated with lower energy lasers, that is, 0.8 millijoule lasers, intraocular pressure lowered at the one month follow-up, but it returned back to its original level after six months. In other words, treatment with a 0.8 millijoule laser seems to cause a temporary drop in intraocular pressure, but it doesn't last. It's a much better story for higher energy lasers. Patients treated with lasers more powerful than one millijoule experience an average of 22% intraocular pressure reduction after six months. When patients were treated with sufficiently high energy lasers, this treatment proved to be efficacious and long lasting. Currently, a much larger international and randomized clinical trial is underway to further test this novel automated DSLT method. As a mostly automated process, it could make the future of glaucoma a lot simpler and easier and faster if approved. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you next time.